Hello, welcome to a directional dash video. Boom. So we'll be able to dash forward, to the side, to the side, back, diagonally. Oh, it, it hit that ramp. So it really increases the maneuverability of that last one we did with the 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 mantling. Really makes it cool. So let's jump in, take a look, see how it's done. So I am using the I use this for the preview of the mantle video, but it's basically the same setup as the one we did together. So I'm just going to use it in this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find empty space. I'm going to add a left shift keyboard event, which you can go to the input settings and add it if you want to be able to use controller or whatever you want. What I want to do is on left shift, I want to get my last input vector. This takes the last direction we pushed that it wants to register character movement. And we want to see if that was a valid input direction. So is valid AI direction. This will make sure that it was an actual input, and if it's not, then we can just have our character dash forward. Or if we do have an input direction, then we can dash in that direction. So if it's true, like we we're trying to dash in a direction, let's do a line trace by channel. Now we want to get the actor location this will be the start. So we'll always start where we're at and then we can take this from the last input vector we can use this to determine the direction we want it to fire off so we will go we want to go in that last input direction let's say let's right click and convert this pin let's say we want them to be able to dash 500 units so from the actor location, let's go in the direction of our last input vector, 500 units for the end trace. For the draw debug type, I'm just going to put that to for duration. When you're done, just go back to none and it hides it. So let's do a break hit result on the out hit. We'll do a bran oop, branch right here connected to that red return value. So if there's not a hit, there was nothing in the way, we don't have to worry about collision settings, we can just basically use the end point as our location we want to teleport to. We're going to create a custom event called, I'm going to call it dash, and it's going to get two inputs. First one is dash direction. And it will be a vector. And then, wait, wait, let me double check. I always do that. I always go back to the same one I'm looking at. All right. one more that will be our dash velocity. So I'm going to move this out of the way for now. Now if there is no hit then we want to take the trace end we can call our dash function and we will call our trace end for the direction and why didn't it why does it have new parameter there instead of it says new parameter but it says dash velocity on this one oh well that's supposed to be dash velocity don't know why it's doing that alright so let's go to that our last input direction will be our dash velocity now if there is a hit, that means there's something there, so we will take the hit location and we want to add to it. You might think, why do we want to add to it? But it's because we're going to subtract a negative from it. So we're going to get our last input vector 
multiply that by a right click convert pin to that and we'll go negative 55 the reason I'm doing negative 55 is because our capsule component collision capsule radius is 55 units so this will take us directly that much this side of that impact just gonna control C control V to could be that dash now it says dash velocity that's strange I don't know so that is our dash direction which I guess this would be a dash location would be better and let's just you know what let's just take this control C control V and that can go into the bottom one and the dash velocity here now it's oh okay, yeah I don't know what that was about Unreal being funky. Alright, so what we're doing is we're checking to see if we have a last input direction. If it's valid, then we want to go through all this, do a line trace in the direction, and then register our hits doing accordingly. And if there's not a last input direction, then let's just do a line trace. We'll get our actor, whew, actor location. For the start, get for actor forward vector so that if they're not pressing a button that way they dash, they just automatically dash forward. So we'll do a multiply on this one. Right click and convert that multiply to use a float because I want to go 500 units ahead of our character from our actor's location. So let's add that for the end. And then we can basically just copy all this right here. Might seem a little messy, but it gets the job done. Move that down. Move you, not you and you, but you and you up. And I'm putting it right up in the other one. Okay. Sorry, excuse me for one, just one second. Get out of here. Alright, connect our hit result, and then that, and that, nope, there, there we go. Boy, that's messy, isn't it? Alright, and so since we're using this as the end, right over here where if we get an impact location we want to do the same thing. We'll multiply our forward vector, convert that to a pin, subtract 55 from it for that. Alright, so now let's set up our actual dash functionality. So we want to add a timeline because we don't want our character to just boom and appear there. Oops, can't call it dashing. Dash movement. Whatever you want your timeline to be, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to hook the play to s from start. And what we want to update is our actor location. So set actor location. We'll set that to the update. I'm going to open up this timeline and set the length to about 0.25, probably good. However long you want it to take for them to go from A to B add a float track alpha right click and add a key to the beginning at time 0 value 0 right click add a key 0.25 and 1 because timelines work on a 0 to 1 ratio type thing just like floats or progress bars now generally speaking I use this auto but what we can also do, what might make it look a little bit smoother, is I'm just going to manually drag this one down. Now, if you get this line below this solid white line right here, it will actually go backwards before it goes forward. So what you can do, if you want to zoom in real close and just kind of follow along with it, value 0 0.01. See right there is going to take me backwards a little bit. So you can just kind of adjust as needed. 
but you can just kind of follow along right there. It'll give you all the values you need to make sure. You never want it to go into a negative value. You always want it to be positive. And if anywhere it's like at 0 0.03 and then it goes back up to like 0 0.06 and then if it were to go to down to 0 0.03 again, I'd hit this point, float it forward a little bit, float backward, and then float forward. So you always want it to be steadily incrementing as it reaches the value of 1. All right, so back in our event graph for our dash on our new location, we can lerp the vector. So we're going to lerp from where we are. So let's get actor location for our A, and for the, the dash direction will be B, which, like I said, that should probably be the um, dash location where you want to dash to. But that'll be fine. So let's compile real quick and test it out. Alright, I can dash forward. I can dash sideways. Sweet. But we're not done yet because what you'll notice is if I'm running forward and I jump and I dash... Uh, I dashed forward. I meant to dash left. So if I'm running forward and I dash left, see I started falling forward again it doesn't update our velocity. So that's where this one will come in. So once we've finished our update of our location, we want to set our actors velo mm, set velocity. Let's grab out the character movement. Maybe it's got to be from there. So set velocity. Yeah, right here. So once it's finished updating our location, we want our character to fall in the direction they are now moving. So we'll take the dash velocity, which is our last input vector, and we can multiply that by a float. I'm going to say 500 gives it a nice fall speed. All right, and in the top version of this graph, we don't need last input vector. What we want up here is if there is no movement this is the one that uh, they didn't have any button press they're just pushing the dash button so this is the actor forward vector just plug directly into dash velocity that way down here it's always doing it appropriately and then afterwards after it's finished updating it'll set our velocity to whatever our dash velocity coming in was times 500 might seem like a lot but when you jump in So let's say I'm running sideways, and I jump, I want to dash forward, now I'm falling forward. But really that helps for a lot for platforming, so like, let's say, ah, okay, well that didn't help for platforming, but, like if I'm jumping across this, it makes it to where I don't, like, overshoot, and I can really aim my jumps a little bit better. So yeah. So there you go. That's how you do a directional dash based on which way you're pushing. Pretty simple stuff. I mean it looks more complicated than it actually turns out to be. Hopefully I explained it well enough. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. If you like the stuff we're doing and you want to, you know, hit that subscribe button, you know, like, comment, all the YouTuber stuff they ask, uh, if y'all want to go ahead and do that, it's much appreciated. Other than that, I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.